um, there were several th questions that were asked to me about inclusion. And more importantly, I was asked how sort of how my own personal journey with a disability has shaped my own experience and my own perspective of understanding inclusion. Let me begin with a simple fact. In my experience of living with a disability, in particular cerebral palsy, it is both a seminal and defining fact of my life. Being born with CP has been not something that I take lightly. For me, it's a gift. And it's, as I look at it, it's my greatest asset. You know, I truly believe that it is because of my disability that I've been driven, that I have found success in every aspect of my life. So let me begin with a story. And, you know, for me, people ask me sort of, what's my greatest accomplishment? Has my greatest accomplishment been working at the White House? Has it been working at the United Nations? Or has it been working on Hollywood films? I said none of the above. My greatest accomplishment was simple and mundane. And I'll tell you the story of when I was eight years old. Um, when I was eight years old, I took part in a pilot program for people who were learning how to ski with cerebral palsy up in Vermont. And one of the first few weeks I was there, I saw a young man who had um, a similar right hemiparesis, a form of cerebral palsy, like myself. And for the first time I had, see, I had seen him, he was tying his own shoes. And for me, that was profound. At that point, I, I had never been able to tie my shoes. I always had, you know, Velcro. And I went up to him one day and I said, could you show me how to tie, you know, the sho my, your shoes? And he sort of slowly began and showed me very quickly um, sort of how each movement was done. And I looked at it with sort of, gr you know, great wonder at the time. But for two months straight, I practiced every single day, just learning how to tie my shoe. And for many, you know, some people think, okay, this is something simple. But for me, it was profound and it was a seminal moment in my life. And what did I learn from that experience? I learned the ability that, one, this was a way in which I could feel included. I was now part of a larger community. In some ways, yes, tying your shoe is very simple. But the fact of the matter is, it was a way in which I could feel like my sisters, like friends. Um, and more simply, it was a way actually to have much more footwear than I could have before, which, which was great. You know, then I could actually go into the store and say, I want that, 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 and that, um, which I couldn't have before, which was, which was great. Um, and I always tell people that, for me, that was the moment that changed my life in ways that nothing has since. Um, and it doesn't matter where I go in this world, that was, that, that was the moment that I felt included, that I felt part of something larger than me. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's funny when I, when I think about it, because that was 33 years ago at this point, and I've had lots of experiences since, and nothing has even come close to that. Um, and, you know, I, I look at it, at it as something that when people think about what is possible and what is, one is, one, what is someone able to do with their lives, I think about something so simple that is so transformative in the way we look at the world. Um, you know, and, and it's important to think of that in that way. And, you know, as I go on in my life, um, you know, I think about a notion, and that is the notion of you can make your wound into your bow. And that is, that is an, you know, an aphorism that I live by. I believe that weakness, if you will, really is great strength. And 
I don't believe in disability in the classic sense of understanding. Rather, I see disability as a new approach to looking at the world and creating an entirely new worldview. The power of the statement of making your wound into your bow is a way to show the powerful repercussions that disability can have and begin to think about in a new way. It is because of my disability that I have learned extremely valuable tools of perseverance, problem solving, and strategic thinking, which, is, which have become natural because they have been part of my everyday life. My wound, or my disability, is in fact my most powerful asset that can serve both as an advantage in this complex world, but it is through the process of this learning how to tie my shoe one-handed that I knew I'd be okay in whatever life had, you know, and life had brought in front of me. Um, and you know, my work um, that I continue to do sort of focuses on this paradigm of the wound and the bow. And I look at sort of the change in the digital age of the 21st century, where we are now truly embracing full inclusion. Persons with disabilities have to be full participants of society in every way. One of the first ways to ensure this, that change can happen and achieve this reality, is to illustrate the value proposition of not only what sort of the community, what I call the lived experience of disability. And what I mean by that, so let me sort of go back for a moment. Um, I believe that the lived experience of disability can galvanize people in new ways. And it's, a, and it's a new way to look at business, it's a new way to look at education, it's a new way to look at society and politics and beyond. See, I believe that in pushing this idea of the lived experience of disability, we can take it in a new way. We can look at this and say, what is the value that we as a community bring to the table? And how do we redefine the paradigm of disability for the 21st century? When I think, thank you. No, go ahead, please. I, I want, listen. My goal up here is to set the tone for the next two days. And I want, I want you to feel comfortable with me, and I want to feel comfortable with you. I am trying to go a little slowly, just because of translation. But if you don't mind, I'm going to go off script whenever I want. And I hope you don't mind that. But I want to make sure that I get the ideas that I'm trying to convey across. Is that OK? Yes? No? Good? Thumbs up? Ah, hey. That's good. That's what I want. OK. Um, you know, and I, I have always talked about this notion of the lived experience of disability and the value proposition that we, we as a community have globally. And it's important, because when I kept thinking about this, this notion, and, and I call it the wound and the bow, and I really sort of took this from uh, an English uh, professor named Edmund Wilson. He was a literary critic in the 1920s that wrote a book called The Wound and the Bow, which was about literary figures um, in 1920s and 1930s literature, um, and particularly British literature, who dealt with a variety of different forms of disability. I just took the step one further, and I said, OK, how do we think about this in the late 20th, sort of late 20th century, early 21st century? And what I learned was, I'm not alone in this this idea of thinking. And the fact of the matter is, there were two psychology professors out of the University of California of Los Angeles, which my, my fiance thinks is the best school in the world. Um, and she's a graduate of UCLA. Um, and it was a great place to live, I must say. Southern California is really lovely. But they introduced the idea of something called the theory of desirable difficulty. And, I, and the idea is that the, and the notion of desirable difficulty, which was, in, which was a theory, has now been recently popularized by best-selling author Malcolm Gladwell in his book, David and Goliath, Underdogs, Misfits, and the Art of Battling Giants. And anyone who hasn't read it, you should. It's a great read. Um, but what's interesting about this notion of 
desirable, the theory of desirable difficulty is that it presupposes that obstacles can be provided, provide advantageous outcomes. Let me sort of repeat that again. That the notion of difficulty can be enormously valuable to a variety of outcomes. And as we take the next steps into reimagining and redefining disability in the 21st century, we must embrace the power of desirable difficulty and use it as a new call to action for persons with disabilities.、Um, I feel that the best way to see the concept of desirable difficulty in action, so to speak, is through the lens of great business leaders. One of the things that I do is As an anthropologist and as a consultant, I study corporate culture and I study businesses for a living. And I'm interested in particularly how persons with disabilities redefine business in the 21st century, how they're redefining technology, how they're actually redefining management theory, how they're redefining structure. And one of the things that I've come across over this time is how many business leaders. In global companies that you know have a disability and have actually come out and said, "My disability is of value," and I sort of went down a list and I said, "Let's look at the list here."、Um, you know, companies like Cisco's CEO John Chambers has publicly acknowledged that he has a disability. Paul Orofella, who was the founder of Kinkos, and I don't know if Kinkos is here. In、um, Europe, and particularly in Germany, but I know that they are all over the U.S. Had discussed publicly in his biography, "Copy This," how his disability has played a significant role and a, and a positive force、um, in his life. And others, for example, were, were Sir Richard Branson, who actually a few weeks ago was quoted in the Washington Post. Um, saying that dyslexia was the secret to his success and his greatest strength. So when I look at business now, and I try to understand what is the value proposition of persons with disabilities in the context of of corporate culture, we have to think about it in terms of human capital, because we we as a community of people with disabilities. We're valuable in terms of our, the workforce. We have something to offer, and we have something to give. And it is so important going forward when you when you think about and when you hear that all of these business leaders have come out publicly stating that their own disability has had a significant, truly significant value. In terms of their business success, and as well in terms of their work-life balance, I think it's important to understand why we need a larger community and people with disabilities in every facet of work life and in every facet of work culture.